Pai again. Thanks for joining us. In this video, we're going to look at designing culverts using the watershed area we calculated in the last video. And then we're also going to look at how we can expand a drainage network created by Infor 360. Now, to begin with, we need to understand how much water is actually going to pass through this low point where our culvert is located. Now, we can use a user-defined runoff, we can use the rational method, or we can use regression methods. Now, here I'm going ahead and filled in the rational areas, but then I realized that I was dealing with 800 and 37 acres. So that's a little larger than I want to use with the rational method. I switched to the regression methodology for New Hampshire, where I am, and then used the peak flow statewide region calculations. Now, these regression equations change based on state. Please be sure to visit and work with a hydrologist who knows your area and knows how these equations should work for you. I'm taking a, just sort of a wild swag at some values here in order to generate some runoff. The thing to note is that when I select that culvert, notice that the runoff value, the, the flow, is 212.5 CFS. That's the same flow that was being calculated by the regression equation. The point is, the two are tied together. When we use Enforx 360's automatic culvert placement to place a culvert to handle a watershed, the flow from that watershed is automatically routed to that culvert. In this case, when I up the values a little bit, I'm getting around 500 CFS, so I have something to analyze. And in this case, I want to modify, by using the design card, the number of barrels in this culvert. Now, I went to a three-barrel culvert, but you'll notice that I'm still getting some pretty high velocities, right? We're still looking at nearly 100 feet per second. That's, that's pretty bad. So we'll go ahead and zoom in on the culvert and I'll grab the gizmo to upsize this to a 30, 36 inch triple barrel culvert. Now automatically Enforx 360 is going to update the analysis and give me some new feedback. 25 CFS is still pretty quick, but you can see the process that we can go through. By tying the watershed to the culvert, I can do some very good engineering before I even leave the conceptual stage of my design. Now let's take a look at adding some more drainage to a parking lot that I've already laid out. I use the road design tools using the adding paving drainage to sort of lay out my trunk line, but now I want to add to it. So I'm using the drainage tools on the design palette to simply click on the drainage network button and begin drawing in a new collection of pipes and inlets. Simply draw where you would like a inlet to be and then notice that my mouse sort of snaps where it's going to join the main trunk line. Right click and in run and I'm connecting a new inlet into my trunk line and adding in a new structure there as well. I can work my way down, adding in new inlets, right click, and run, and repeat the process as many times as I need. Once I have one side of the parking lot completed, or at least a sketch of what it might be like completed, I'm going to jump to the other side and begin playing with the idea of using another trunk run. So in this case, we'll actually begin at an existing inlet and just draw our way up the parking lot, essentially following uh, where I'm going to eventually grade in a break. Again, each pick will place a inlet and then right click to end run. Simple and easy way to add in more drainage to your existing Enforx 360 design. Thanks for watching this video. To learn more, join the Enforx 360 community by visiting the website on your screen. There you'll see forums, the idea station for sharing your ideas, and infra tips where you can learn more ways to make Enforx 360 a more powerful part of your infrastructure workflow. Thanks again.